Okay, I'd like to talk a little about using washes. These are metallic oxides that you put on top of a glaze. So the basic and most simple ones are just straight metallic oxides and water. This is iron and cobalt. Cobalt's strange in that it's not what you expect. You think of cobalt as being blue? Well, check out the color of cobalt. It's not. So there's cobalt. It's pink. Iron is just exactly the way you'd expect it. Now, take a look at the iron. It's got water sitting on the top. The iron settles down. So before using it, you always have to stir it up. And then as you're using it, you keep stirring it. Chrome, very refractory. It doesn't like to melt. So I usually put a little Gersley borate in with it. Now the oxide washes that we use at school already have it mixed in. So it's probably one to one Gersley borate to chrome because it's very refractory. It takes a lot of temperature to melt, and if you put it on too thick, it'll be dry. So chrome, green. And most glazes, it'll be green. Then we have an impure form of titanium called rutile. And this is titanium, which causes crystals. And A little bit of iron mixed by nature. That's why it's this tan color. And this does very interesting things. It tends to lighten up glazes. It can create some small crystals. And if you have a dark glaze, like this glaze here, Temoku, you put rutile, and that's the same as the chrome. Rutile is refractory. Put rutile on top of the Temoku, it goes gold. With tiny little crystals. Too much, just like too much of a good thing. Another good one to put it on is red. And the red bleaches. This is the glaze. This is a glaze that's called Edo Red. And it's got rutile where it goes almost white and bleaches it. And then it also has some cobalt in there. Cobalt mixed with rutile. And then finally, of the main washes that we use, there's copper. And we use copper carbonate. There are different sources of copper. Copper carbonate is turquoise. Copper oxide is black. On certain glazes, you can get red with this too much on, you get black. Too much acts like a flux, will we'll melt the glaze quicker. Now, I like to combine things. Cobalt, very strong. Our form of cobalt is very pure cobalt, so it's deep, bright blue. Here's some cobalt on top of a celadon glaze. Really intense, tense blue. So what I do is I'll mix cobalt and rutile together and lighten up that cobalt. So instead of getting a deep, deep blue, you get a pastel blue, like in here. like you can see on the light area up here and these dots. Now you can mix iron and rutile together. 50-50 and you get more orange. Now this one's really really thin. I'm gonna pour off a little bit of this water. 
can always take the water out and put it back in. Yeah. Stir this one up. Now the consistency should be like ink. It shouldn't be thick like poster paint. It should be quite thin. This is on a little bit on the thick side. Good way to check it is to take like a stainless steel bowl. At school we use a sink and brush a little bit on there. Now that's pretty thick. So I'm going to add a little bit more water in. A good way to add water is with a sponge. Sponge, you can squeeze it a little or a lot of water. So you can really have quite quite good control. Check that out again. Almost. What you want it, the consistency you want is where you brush it on and it starts to run. So I just added some more water. There it goes. Just a little bit more. Always keep them stirred. Yeah. Okay, that's about right. So we've got iron and rutile and cobalt and rutile. I'm going to adjust this one too. There. You should be able to see the bristles of the brush. If you can't, it's probably too thick. Then the last one we have is a combination of everything. It's got cobalt, it's got chrome, it's got iron. It makes black. It even has some manganese dioxide in it. And this will come out black. Put this on just a little bit thicker than I would the other ones. Okay. Now, you can paint directly on top of a glaze. Now this glaze right here is this glaze. It's satin white. And what I did is I put a band of iron and rutile around the outside. I used iron and rutile here. This line around here is copper. This is cobalt and rutile. There's some more copper right there. And this is the black. Straight cobalt on this glaze. Are you ready for this? It comes out purple. So, I'm going to start by banding the wheel. So you center it on a wheel, banding the plate, hold the brush on the edge, and you get a line. Remember, the thicker it is, the darker it will be until it just saturates and becomes metallic. You can see right here, that's where the brush started and I lifted and it went gold where it was thinner, where it's darker, it's thicker. So I'm just going to Dots. So those will be very strong. Be strong down there. One of the frustrating things about painting with oxides is you can't see how it's going to be until after the firing. So you have to have experience. So I'm going to add some of the cobalt and rutile. Now 
all those lines will show. And where I just put it on thicker, it'll be darker. And finally, I'm going to just accent it. Because I know on this glaze, copper can go black where it's thick, green where it's medium, and can even blush pink. So I'm going to put a little bit of copper on here. So I'm just going to accent it. Just a little bit on that outside edge. Maybe the center of these. Accent these. Have fun with it. And then finally, when you're painting, it's always good to have a variety of thickness of line, different intensities. So I'm going to take a really fine brush and use a little bit of black to make some of these things pop out. Like any painting, the hardest part is knowing when to stop. I think I'm going to stop on this one. So that's how you apply oxide washes.